IPD, or interpupillary distance. Everyone who buys a VR headset needs to know about this. Do you know what yours is? Well, don't worry, because today I'll be telling you all about IPD, why it matters, and how you can measure your own. Interpupillary distance, or IPD, is quite literally the distance between your pupils. It's a very simple measurement that is nonetheless extremely important to choosing a VR headset, largely because no two pairs of eyes are the same. At the end of the day, you can't choose your IPD, so the headset you buy is either going to have to accommodate for it or give you a worse visual experience. The reason IPD is so important is because it literally dictates your point of view, both in the real world and in VR. In order to effectively create an illusion of depth while maintaining the highest level of visual detail possible, the display and optics must be calibrated to the position of each of your pupils. If the headset's IPD is set too narrow, you might end up seeing less peripheral FOV than intended. But if it's set too wide, you might have the opposite effect, actually missing some FOV towards the center of your vision. On top of that, VR optics generally have what's called a sweet spot, a location usually around the center of the lens that provides a very high pixel density and image clarity. If this is misaligned with your pupil, the view may appear blurry in areas directly in front of you, and you won't likely get the full benefit of the headset's peak pixel density. If you go to any honest VR manufacturer's website, come on Meta, sort this out, you should see a small section on their spec sheet talking about the supported IPD range for their headset. There's actually several ways that a headset can accommodate for their wearer's IPD, as follows. Through software, this method is the simplest and cheapest to implement and adjusts to the user's IPD by moving the view around on the display panel. This is by far the worst method for accommodating for IPD and due to the lack of lens repositioning, will actually have users outside of an ordinary IPD range generally missing their headset's sweet spot and seeing a blurrier image than they would otherwise. This system was used by headsets like the Rift S and completely rules out those devices for users with very wide or very narrow IPDs. Moving the lenses. This method involves using a mechanical adjustment system to move the headset's lenses apart or towards each other, and is usually accompanied by some software adjustment to the rendered image. This allows for the lenses to stay aligned with the wearer's pupils, which keeps that sweet spot in focus. But if your IPD is particularly wide, you might find that the headset actually runs out of display space as you move the lenses very far apart. This is the system that you'll find on headsets like the Quest 2. Moving the lenses and displays. This method requires that the headset has two display panels rather than a single one, and moves both the lenses and displays while adjusting the IPD. This both ensures that the sweet spot stays aligned with your eyes, and makes sure that you're making full use of the display panel, no matter how wide apart your eyes are. You can find this system on headsets like the Valve Index. And finally, automatic hardware IPD adjustment. This method combines mechanical adjustment of the lenses and displays with eye tracking data allowing the headset to adjust for your IPD fully automatically. This is definitely the most effective IPD adjustment system and is only found on very high-end devices like the Vario Aero. Using eye tracking data allows the headset to be much more accurate with its lens placement, potentially down to sub-millimeter levels. Not only is this method super accurate and convenient, it also looks extremely cool. So, I know my IPD is important, but how do I actually measure it? Well, there's a few ways to measure your IPD. Firstly, you can use apps like Glasses On for Android or iMeasure for iOS, which will measure and calculate your IPD for you with your phone camera. If you're lucky enough to have access to a headset with automatic IPD adjustment or eye tracking, then it should be possible to use that to work out your IPD, though at that point you probably won't even need to because it's doing the work for you anyway. Finally, if you want to measure it yourself, the easiest way is to stand in front of a mirror and hold out a ruler in front of your eyes with the scale visible. Close one eye and align the start of the ruler scale with your open eye, then close that eye and open the other, and try to see what distance on the ruler lines up with the center of the now open eye. Whatever distance you find should be the distance between your pupils. The average human IPD is around 63mm, so if you're anywhere near that, consider yourself lucky because most headsets will work for you right out of the box. If you're like me and a bit outside the normal range, my IPD is 69, nice then some headsets just won't be able to accommodate for you all that well, and you'll want to make sure whenever you're looking to make a new VR purchase that the headset has hardware IPD adjustment that supports your measurement. Software adjustment just won't cut it here, but luckily most headsets support a custom lens separation, and that's good enough. IPD is an even bigger problem for some, with people having an IPD as wide as 75mm or even as narrow as 50mm. 
Most good manufacturers still only advertise IPD support from around 55mm up to maybe 72mm, and that still cuts off a fairly reasonable fraction of the population from being able to truly enjoy VR properly. Here's hoping that as the technology matures and sees adoption, that we start getting more support for people at the extremes. Anyway, here's the key points you should take from this video. The first, make sure you measure your IPD before you buy your first headset. This is extremely important and if you get it wrong you might end up with a product that you can't use properly. Secondly, avoid software IPD adjustment unless your eyes are close to the average of 63mm. Finally, if your IPD is very far from average, make sure you check if your chosen headset either supports your IPD or is very close to it before you make that purchase. And if you ever need to check the supported IPD of headsets that might not list it on their own website, you can always check out our spec sheets on VR Compare. We have spec sheets for every commercially available VR headset, and most of them will have their IPD range listed as well. And to those who already have automatic hardware IPD adjusting headsets, I'm totally not jealous. Okay, maybe a little. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this VR Compare Explainer on IPD. Uh, hopefully this was useful to you. If you didn't know it, I hope this helped you understand it. And if you already do know it, maybe just pass it along to someone who might not know. There's a lot of people who have no idea that their own eye separation might actually stop them from using the headset they want to buy. Anyway, as I mentioned in the video, if you want to find out more about the IPD of a specific headset, you can always check on the VR Compare website. And if you've got a wide or a narrow IPD, why not leave a comment? Let me know your experience. Does it make using a VR headset harder for you? I'd love to know. Right, cheers everybody.